So we like our brothers in humanity to get the Islamic perspective, mm -hmm. to know like what do these Muslims think? Sure, right? that's what I'm ready so, to help you So with. Steve is writing in, he's saying, look guys, okay, this is, I'm paraphrasing the, the email, we get a lot of these, look, if God created man to like woman and woman to like man, what's the problem if he created some men to like men or women to like women, what's your guys' problem with that? Mm -hmm. Why are you guys so, you know, against this? <clears throat> yeah, this is obviously, as you said, it's a, it's a very, uh, these days it's a very sensitive topic and uh, it is uh, difficult to speak out against what we consider to be certain immoral actions uh, because frankly if we criticize uh, homosexuality some people equate this with blatant racism that criticizing homosexuality is deemed to be pretty much the same these days as criticizing somebody for the color of their skin uh, and they think that this is something beyond their control and uh, our perspective and the perspective of pretty much, well, all of the Abrahamic faiths once upon a time in the last 20 years that's been changing in Christianity and Judaism, but still uh, many Christian movements and many Jewish movements and mainstream uh, Muslims by and large, they still follow these commandments that they believe were given by their Creator, by Allah, by God. And of those commandments is that our Lord has told us that uh, sexuality is a, now this is our position, sexuality is an innate desire that's legitimate, that is permitted, that is completely allowed to enjoy within the confines of marriage, right? We don't view sex and sexuality as being something inherently negative or evil. There were some Christian theologians such as St. Augustine and others, they actually viewed the sexual urge as being inherently evil even within marriage. and they said that there should be minimal pleasure even within marriage. That the only reason you should procreate is for children. But in our religion, we have a very different perspective. We believe that our Lord gave us the internal desire to eat and drink and procreate, right? And every one of these desires can be manifested in a permissible manner, and it can be manifested in an impermissible manner, right? So it's good for us to eat, but our t religion tells us certain foods are harmful to us. It's good for us to drink, our religion tells us that alcohol is harmful to us, we should avoid it. Go ahead and drink natural juices, drink so many beautiful things that God has created, even drink concoctions we have made up, right? As long as they're not harmful to us. Similarly, when it comes to sex and sexuality, our Lord has encouraged us, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has encouraged us to get married. And He has encouraged us to live uh, joyful lives, and that means, and I will be very explicit here, He wanted us to have good, healthy sexual lives within marriage. Our religion is very explicit uh, about this point. The Quran tells us that our Lord has created us from male and female, and He has made for us spouses from the opposite gender, so that we may live in peace and in harmony, and find love and comfort in them. And so the man finds comfort and love in the woman, and the woman finds comfort and love in her husband. And within the confines of marriage, that is a beautiful, that is a, uh, a, that is a, a part and parcel of human society. When the family is safe and sound, society is safe and sound. We firmly believe the family is the building block of society. Therefore, anything that harms the family, it harms society. And that is why our religion tells us that divorce is something that really should be avoided as much as possible. We want to break families up, unless sometimes it happens they really have to hand up a divorce, well then, okay, that's inevitable. But the, the, the basic rule is that couples should be made married to each other for really for as long as possible till they die. And families should find peace and happiness within each other because when they are happy, society will be happy. So our religion says extramarital affairs are not allowed. That a husband cannot just go sleeping around with other women. And that's a very major crime in our religion, right? Now, similarly, our religion also says that finding sexual pleasures within the same gender is something that is an unnatural manifestation of a natural urge. The urge is natural. What is the urge? Sex and sexuality. That's natural, right? Our religion says limit that sex and sexuality to that which is conducive to yourself and to society at large, and that is marriage. Suppose somebody says, but it's not my fault. I don't find pleasure in women, my pleasure, he's a man, he says, my pleasure is in the same gender. Mm -hmm. Suppose somebody says that, and he says, God created me this way. Our response to this is, personally, I'm not going to go into the philosophical or the biological question of nature versus nurture. You know, did God create man, uh, a particular man to be gay or not? Frankly, I don't know. But I do know one thing, that 
every one of us has temptations, every one of us has desires. Every one of us has temptations and desires that sometimes are harmful to us. Our religion tells us one of the jobs of our faith is to protect us from those desires and temptations that will harm us. So bottom line, let me give you an example here. So I'm a man and I have no qualms admitting in public and on TV that as a man I'm attracted to beautiful women. This is part and parcel of being a man and I think I would be safe in saying that the large percentage of you know my fellow men would agree with me that a beautiful woman is a uh, something that basically does not allow you to concentrate. You know, you so have we to, raise our hand to that. Yes, we all, we all. This is something that you know it's human nature. That, frankly, it is ingrained in us. If somebody were to say God created us this way, there's an element of truth. Yeah, okay. Now, does that justify me lusting after every single beautiful woman on earth? Does that justify me saying, you know what, I can't help it. I find every single beautiful woman attractive. You know, let me just ignore my wife and the rights of my wife and let me go after this lady and that lady and that lady. Would anybody agree to such type of logic? Another person will say, these are called kleptomaniacs, they have the urge to steal. Right? Another person will say, look I have plenty of money but when I'm just walking in the store and I can find a, a something to stuff in my pocket, there's just this urge inside of me, I can't help it. I just want to take it and steal. What if he says this to the court of law and the judge? And the judge says, well, okay, God created you to be a kleptomaniac, go ahead. What if a mass murderer says, I can't help it. These urges come in me and I just want to kill people. Now, I'm not equating murder with homosexuality. But I'm saying, what if somebody says, this is an urge in me, I can't help it. No, you can help it. The urge might be beyond your control. But then you can cater to it by blocking it or by channeling it in a permissible manner. One of these two things has to be done, okay? So if I have a lust for a woman that's not allowed for me to lust after, well then, I have to control that urge. And I have to find happiness within the confines of marriage. And that's what our religion tells us to do. Similarly, if a man lusts after another man, he has one of two options. Either he, and, I, and there are people, and I have met many Muslims like this, so nobody can tell me this is not true, because I have met people like this. Either he does try to minimize this urge and find happiness in women, and this is possible, and it has happened. Or if he really finds it impossible, well then the only alternative for him is to live a celibate life. Nobody is forcing a woman on him. Nobody is forcing him to get married. It's not, it's not obligatory in our religion. But if he finds that his urge is to something that our religion considers to be unnatural, then there's nothing for him to do other than to battle that urge, just like I have to battle urges for women that are not allowed for me. Just like the kleptomaniac has to battle urges for, just like the alcoholic, when he passes by some alcohol, and his doctors have told him, or if he's a Muslim, his faith has now renewed. He remembers how beautiful that wine was. He remembers how sweet that taste was, right? Just like a drug addict. Just because he has the urge, it does not justify manifesting that urge. Now having said that, it's a very important point to make here. Being a homosexual does not disqualify you from being a Muslim. I mean very explicit here. Just like drinking does not disqualify you from being a Muslim. Just like taking drugs, you can be a Muslim and take drugs. You can be a Muslim and be a homosexual. But we will tell this person what you're doing is immoral according to the teachings of our faith. And Christianity and Judaism. And well that is mainstream interpretations. You know that even within yeah. Christianity a lot, of, uh, yeah. a lot of differences are happening. But yes, many, many conservative Christians, uh, Orthodox Jews, yes they also feel the exact same Let's way. Let's go right there. We have to go to break and we'll be right back to sure. continue okay. here with Sheikh Yasser Qadi on the Deen 